Hi, my name is Eugen, and this is the week 6 homework assignment for the course Introduction to Music Production on Coursera.org. Today I'll be teaching modulation in synthesizers using low-frequency oscillators. For that purpose I chose Massive Synthesizer by Native Instruments. It's a great flexible creative tool that allows to design sounds for nearly every style of music. It has a clear interface. Here we see all the main components. Audible oscillators, filters, the amplifier, the set of envelopes and LFOs. There's also a bunch of other nice elements like effects, modulation oscillator, noise generator and so on. Almost every parameter of the synth can be said to be modified by one of several LFOs and envelopes or by a MIDI signal. If you want to start using this synth, I recommend you to invest an hour or two in reading the manual, so you would be able to use all those functions and tweak the knobs with a certain understanding. Wavetable of Massive has a huge variety of waveforms. I'll choose a simple sine square waveform. It means that it can be changed from a simple sine to a square. As I turn the intensity knob, you can hear and actually see on the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer the synth adding higher partials to the signal. Let's automate this modulation with the LFO. It will be the source of modulation. Massive has an option to make continuous transitions between the types of the LFO with this slider. I'll just leave it in the position that corresponds to the triangle shape. We simply drag and drop the LFO name under the intensity knob that is the so-called destination and choose the amount and the direction of the modulation. At first, the amount is almost zero. I'm increasing it. Now I'll change the direction of the modulation. Now the signal changes literally in the opposite direction. Okay. Now, I personally don't like that the square wave is so loud. I want the oscillator amplitude to be smaller when the waveform turns to square. The easiest way is to control the amplitude with the same LFO but in the opposite phase. The more high-end partials added, the smaller the overall amplitude. I'll skip the adjustment part to save time, cause Massive remembered all the information about the amount and the direction of the modulation the last time I used it. Note that during designing a sound you should pay attention to the types of LFOs, not just picking a random one, because it may be the source of the unwanted clicks, like here, because the LFO has a sharp transition from one extremum to another. The next thing we can do about the oscillator one is to modify the pitch. I'll choose another LFO, the square type and set the amount of the modulation equal 6 semitones. It means that the frequency of the oscillator will jump from the lowest to the highest in the range of one octave. The frequencies of the LFOs are not related now. That sounds chaotic, but I don't mind. As I already mentioned, we could control almost everything with our LFOs. So let's use this to control the filter's cutoff frequency. I choose low pass type of filter here with a noticeable resonance, so you could literally see this bell of changing resonant frequencies on every wave on the oscillator. That's basically it. But let's go a little bit further and do something more complex. For instance, make the second LFO modify the frequency of the first LFO. It's especially fruitful in designing beats, by the way, but it's not the case. Now, to make it more interesting, let's add some reverb with the amount that is modified by the first LFO. I think you can hear the difference best in your headphones. I 
I like that. A few more modifications and we'll get a nice chaotic sound. Thanks for watching. See ya.